Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday morning to you all. Hope you guys are waking up and feeling good out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day and more importantly, staying safe out there, especially for my friends here in the Carolinas where we have numerous flash flood warnings ongoing. We've had multiple tornado warnings this morning. I mean, even just after midnight, things started to get pretty haywire with the tornado threat. We've had confirmed tornadoes. We've had actual damage uh, of course, with at nighttime, nobody has really seen these tornadoes so uh, so much, but we've seen the damage uh, and uh, certainly continues to be a threat out there. And I honestly think the tornado risk of this um, should be talked about a lot more, to be completely honest with you. I really think the tornado risk is going to be substantial across eastern North Carolina and even getting into Virginia as we get later into this afternoon to this evening. So we're going to speak heavily on that. We're going to talk about how much more rain uh, the Carolinas up into Virginia, even into the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast is going to get over the next couple of days. We'll talk about winds and we'll just give you all the latest information. Of course, uh, the information will get, I would say, uh, not as detailed uh, over the next couple of days because we're going to say goodbye to Debbie finally. And then all of our attention is going to shift back out to the Atlantic where we have a tropical system that we need to figure out that that will be a tropical system i think most likely over the next uh, several days and uh this one has legs guys listen the i'm not trying to hype anything up but the lid is certainly about to pop off the atlantic as far as tropical activity and uh, things are about to get pretty active um, out there so we already have another system that we need to figure out and we'll have a segment up in this video really breaking down the next tropical wave uh, that we need to watch. The next name out the hurricane list of names is Ernesto, uh, the E name. So, you know, I got a feeling by the time we get into this time next week, we might have a next our next name storm. So we'll give you the daily update on what's going to happen weather-wise across the rest of the lower 48 like we always do, and then we'll get you guys covered. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, please Please put those in the comments uh, below. Let's get rocking and rolling. So Tropical Storm Debbie on your screen, still a tropical storm. And these kind of orange outlined boxed areas, these are flash flood warnings that are ongoing. Uh, you know, at my house, we got some gusty showers, winds gusting to 25, 35 miles per hour. I live here in Columbia, South Carolina. But, you know, you head on up uh, 77, you go out to Rock Hill, Charlotte, all the way up to Winston-Salem. You guys are seeing heavy rain, some gusty winds. And it's these feeder bands right here. The actual center of low pressure, if you're wondering, is probably somewhere into here. Okay. But the worst of the weather is just like what we were speaking on. You know, on this little comma head, little feature right here on kind of the northwest, northern side of this system. I do expect this to continue to sort of wrap around the circulation down to the Midlands. And I do want to watch some storms. And I'll speak on them a little bit that do try to form on the southern side of this low. That sort of wrap back through the southern portion of South Carolina might take some people by surprise uh, this evening uh, for my friends here in the southern Midlands and the low country of South Carolina. Don't let it take you by surprise because it certainly could happen. Uh, but these bands that continue to pivot in off the Atlantic Ocean on the what we call the dirty east side of this system, uh, which typically has the highest tornado activity, uh, continues to bring the tornado risk. We've had confirmed tornadoes and all these banding features that we're going to speak on a lot more throughout the video this is the dangerous setup of this video. Of course, we have this little dry slot opening up. This is actually going to help aid on making some of these storms a little bit more discreet. So even though we have ongoing tornado watches right now, we will get tornado watches reissued for these areas probably later out, later throughout this morning into the afternoon hours. So that's what's going on right now. Of course, if we kind of zoom out to see what's going on here, the moisture is creeping all the way up into the mid-Atlantic now. Uh, northeast, it's not wet really but i expect that to change over the next um 12 to 24 hours but as far as the actual advisory from the national hurricane center still technically as of around the 5 a.m update a 50 mile per hour tropical storm so i mean there's it's a tropical storm over land um it's moving uh, northwest at five miles per hour so where i kind of drew the l on the screen it might actually be a little bit southeast of that it's always hard to tell on radar where the actual center of low pressure is for example saying it's still just inland into South Carolina, but if you kind of zoom into this, you know, one would probably think that the center of low pressure is probably like somewhere into here, right? Well, it actually might be a little bit down here. So I've uh, always pretty wild to uh, compare both. So right here is the center of the storm, or probably a little bit further up now, but continues to be a tropical storm um, as we get into this afternoon. Uh, the cone has shifted a little bit further west, uh, but the center of the storm will go between Sumter and Florence. 
but of course impacts will be widespread on the west and east side of this. The actual center of low pressure, I should just reiterate that, is going to go right up through central North Carolina. And then if we kind of zoom in and look at this, it's going to go right up through central VA, right up through Maryland, all the way through the eastern half of PA. The, the, the cone kind of spreads out a little bit once we get into New York, Vermont, New Hampshire. But you guys are, of course, this system picks, uh, picks up a lot of forward speed. So 2 p.m. here tomorrow um to 2 a.m saturday that's 12 hours it goes from like southern pa all the way up to vermont so it picks up a lot of forward speed and then eventually this thing gets way up here in canada and then totally dissipates and we will finally all wave a final goodbye uh to debbie all the memes all the jokes and certainly all the on the more serious side all the damage done we can finally begin to clean up and move past it so um, the latest HER model, HRRR model, let's just focus on this. No point in looking at all the model guidance. We will take a look at the European once we move into the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. But as far as the shorter term, what happens today into tonight, we will continue to watch these bands. It'll move in. And there's two things, two main things going on here. Okay, we'll take it to about midday or early afternoon. We continue to have um, Heavy rain, gusty winds all the way up from Virginia all the way down to western North Carolina, potentially all the way into the upstate of uh, South Carolina. In this entire region here, we're going to get heavy rain, gusty winds, and then this sort of opening uh, opens up right into here. And this is when you're going to have an even more dangerous tornado threat that's going to materialize across eastern North Carolina. You see how you're getting little splotches, little white areas, little breaks in, in between kind of the greens, yellows, reds, and orange. Uh, this is this is going to allow for the actual the atmosphere to destabilize, become an, become unstable, and uh, is actually going to provide enough energy in the atmosphere, aided with already a lot of kinematic energy in this area, kinematic energy being wind energy, um, you know the heating and stuff being your uh, thermodynamics, your cape levels and moisture levels and things like that. Check that all out the box in this area. We got to watch any storms pivoting through this area. They will have absolutely a tornado threat uh, throughout this afternoon. I mean, even this morning, too. Uh, we're getting a tornado risk right now. But we continue to move this forward here. The actual center of the storm is probably going over the South Carolina, North Carolina line at this point. I mean, this is around 6, 7 p.m. this evening. You're still getting gusty showers and storms all the way down here to Columbia. And uh, we got to watch all these storms in eastern North Carolina, southeastern Virginia. You continue. You see these you see these features right in here? Uh, I mean, that, that would be definitely a significant tornado threat, in, in my opinion. Even though there's only a slight risk, I'll show you that in here in a second. That would be, I mean, I, I think we're going to get several tornadoes today. We've already had a few this morning. I think we'll have several, a few handfuls of tornadoes by the time we're all said and done. And remember I was telling you about, you know, low right here maybe. Uh, the, the energy kind of on the southern side of the low that could wrap through, swing back under the low well this is what i'm talking about here you see these showers and storms right down here this is around like 9 to 10 11 p.m tonight i do want to watch these as they kind of pivot up around the low this could catch some people by surprise down here south of columbia maybe all the way down to orangeburg bamberg Col uh, charleston back to myrtle beach to think that the system is completely over these bands could actually move back through and uh gusty winds uh, and maybe some stronger storms with this it's just something to watch but you continue to watch you see that big plume of moisture late this evening riding up through western va this area needs a lot of rain and uh, they're definitely going to get it very quickly but you see all those yellows and, and orange tint colors here this is where heavy rain and gusty winds are falling this evening in western va and then you continue and then you know you got to watch i mean this is like one or two o'clock in the morning uh tonight well, getting late tonight. Um, look at Richmond. You see these little features right in here. You want to watch as this kind of area of storm sort of sweeps back through. This will probably be a tornado threat also tonight across uh, northern, northeastern sections of North Carolina into eastern VA. And that is something to watch too, along with the heavy rain on the northern and northwest side of the system. And you continue, and then we get into tomorrow, and we could be left over one last little nasty area of storms um, into eastern North Carolina. And then we can actually just get some regular flow behind this and actually get some nasty storms maybe into the Midlands of South Carolina tomorrow evening. So that's something to watch. 
As far as rainfall, we'll see if you have a new graphic here. No, we do not. So latest rainfall, of course, it's raining like crazy out here for a lot of these areas already. So, you know, an additional several inches of rain is possible from, from western North Carolina all the way through eastern North Carolina. The Midlands of South Carolina, upstate of South Carolina, you know, maybe another couple inches. And, you know, the National Weather Service is picking up is picking up on this little banding feature down here. You see how it kind of adds in some additional one to two inch rainfall totals down here. That is that little banding feature is trying to pick up on south of the low. So it actually, the models have been showing that for like two days. I've been watching it. Uh, so that's something to certainly watch. But this is the latest rainfall. Of course, we take a, a little bit of a, of a larger look up into Virginia. Um, and then I'll look at the rest of the mid-Atlantic here in a second. Um, but there's VA. I mean, look, I mean, the rain's getting pushed up against the foothills and the mountains of Virginia. So you're going to squeeze out four to six inches of rain. A lot of rain's going to fall in this area that really needs it, especially in western VA and then eastern West Virginia up into Maryland. So much needed rain, several inches coming. It's going to fall uh, fast and furious too that out there, that's for sure. And then, you know, you look at the risk of flash flooding in the pink area. That is where you have a rare high risk. That means you have a 70% chance, level four out of four, uh, of seeing flash flood guidance being exceeded within 25 miles in the given location. This stretches from Wilmington up to Raleigh, Durham, Greensboro, Lynchburg, Roanoke, Blacksburg, all the way up to Charlottesville, um, all the way up to Harrisburg, guys. So this is a significant risk of flooding. And then you've got a moderate risk all the way from uh, southern sections of PA all the way down to Myrtle Beach still, all the way back to Charlotte. So um, risk of flash flooding is significant today. Winds will be a big deal too. Occasionally you're going to get some 30, 40 mile per hour wind gusts. So if you have any like weak limbs that are hanging on by a thread, regardless, you know, for example, my backyard right now, I have some pretty large limbs in my, um, in my backyard, you know, I have two giant oak trees and we've had some 25, 35 mile per hour wind gusts here. They're just pretty much been the last push to knock these out of my tree. I'm kind of happy they are as long as they don't cause any damage because eventually they're going to fall regardless. So um, but anyway, some gusty winds um, from that. Uh, but, you know, 30, 45 mile per hour wind gusts are possible. Some of these bands that will pivot through eastern North Carolina up into Virginia could produce 50 to, you know, 40 to 50 mile per hour winds. And then, you know, you look at the tidewater area, a lot of uh, stout southerly flow will kind of get pushed. This might actually push a little bit of water up into the bay, a little bit of, of, of some rising water, a little bit of a storm surge, I would say, is possible into the Chesapeake Bay here. Uh, we'll just have to watch to see what happens with that. But we'll look up, we'll look more into the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast here in, here in a second, but just focusing on really Virginia and the Carolinas here. But gusty winds expected. The tornado threat, quite serious today, guys. Even though there's only a 5% risk, I really could see them bumping this up to a 10% risk sometime in the next update or two. But they might not. They might not. 5% risk of a tornado in the brown area. 2% uh, risk of a tornado in the... Um, green area within 25 miles in the even location and this is because let's make sure we got this in motion here and we did not so i'm glad i checked center of the storm is, is really not this large it's just this is the lower level winds so i want you to notice here as we move this up in time we take it to about midday you see this low level jet here ramping at over 50 knots these are winds moving at about interstate speed just about and about a mile above our heads here so we have this intense south to southeast uh, low-level jet, really just a southerly low-level jet rumbling through this area. We got energy building into this area. We have these banding features. So you have the overlapping ingredients of your classic tropical tornado threat right into this area today. So that's why you had that 5% risk of a tornado. This will be an ongoing tornado threat throughout the, the morning hours, throughout the overnight hours, and all the way into Virginia. And then the low-level jet sort of ramps back up here across eastern North Carolina this evening into Virginia this evening where the tornado threat could actually increase as we're getting later into tonight. So you see this stout southerly, see how these wind barbs are coming out the south? The flag on this wind barb is pointing to the south. That means the flow is coming straight out the south. This is a legit tornado threat for northeastern North Carolina, eastern VA tonight. Also, center of the lows, probably somewhere into here. So classic eastern, northeastern quadrant tornado threat. Kinematics are there. A lot of wind energy is what I mean when I say kinematics. And you look at the significant tornado parameter, guys, you know, you're not going to see any crazy high numbers like you do out in the plains. You're not going to see that. You don't see that with, with, with tropical threats. But what you do see here 
is some sporadic twos and threes and fours on the significant tornado perimeter. And then we start to get into this afternoon, Southeast VA starts to get threes, fours, and fives on the significant tornado perimeter. Remember, the higher the number, the better the ingredients for tornadoes. So when you're seeing values this high on a tropical threat, you know that this tornado threat is serious. And look how it spikes again this evening. Like this is like this is like midnight to one o'clock in the morning, not really the evening, kind of like the overnight hours. And I know you're seeing some parameters down here. Now I don't I think the ingredients are there for tornadoes. I just think the veering of the winds do not support tornadoes down here in South Carolina with the flow of the southern end of the low. But who knows? It's certainly certainly something we need to watch. That would definitely throw me in the loop for a loop there. But uh, the tornado threat is serious in eastern North Carolina. It's serious right now. It continue to be serious all the way up to Virginia throughout the entire next 24 hours. But, you know, taking a look at the mid-Atlantic, the rest of this storm, we continue to move forward here. Big plume of moisture surges through uh, western VA into eastern West Virginia, central to western Maryland. Big plume of moisture also gets all the way up into PA. Some gusty winds in this in Pennsylvania. As we're getting into tomorrow, you see these uh, kind of splotches of greens, yellows, and oranges right in here. This is where we can have some nasty bands that are just kind of making their way through eastern uh, Virginia, Maryland tomorrow. Could have a tornado threat there tomorrow also. And then this big push of moisture continues uh, to move all the way up into the northeast. Um, as we're getting, let's speed this up in time. Uh, as we're getting into Friday night, but even today up in the northeast, like this is backing it up into the day this afternoon, big plume of showers and storms will push up through pretty much anywhere in, in interior New England, maybe not as much for the I-95 corridor. And then we're getting into Friday. Here's all this moisture in Pennsylvania, a lot of moisture in New York City, uh, a lot of moisture, <clears throat> just not quite as much, I would say, along the I-95 corridor. And we continue... And this goes all the way to Friday evening. We could get some strong gusty winds. You know, low pressure, low pressure right in here, right? Stout southerly flow riding up through these areas. So we could certainly get a little water getting pushed up against some of these, uh, like Long Island, New Jersey, uh, southern New England coastlines here. And we're going to get some breezy conditions right up through this region too. And associated with the low also. So some of these showers and storms pushing through southern new england things like that could be have some very gusty winds with them. i mean you got the remnants of a tropical storm rumbling pretty much right over to your northwest and this will continue and we're getting into saturday morning and honestly by the time we're at saturday midday we're done with this the second half of the weekend will we will not be talking about debbie at all anymore so we just got to get through the next few days. Um, but rainfall, a closer look at the Mid-Atlantic, rainfall between now and Sunday morning, good swath of several inches of rain in the Mid-Atlantic, uh, you know, the, the Central Apps region. We get into Pennsylvania, basically from, I would say, West Central PA, State College area, eastward, uh, you're good for two to four, maybe five inches of rain. Closer to New Jer Jersey, Delaware, not as much rain, but you could get some stronger winds in this area, a couple inches of rain. Southern New England, uh, a couple inches of rain is possible. And then, of course, we um, move up the road a little bit to New England. And uh, just a quick hitting two to three inches of rain across central New York State. Not as much back to Buffalo. Maybe a good inch of rain in New York City, but Vermont, New Hampshire, a quick hitting washout of one to two, maybe as much as two and a half inches of rain. You get up into Quebec, a lot more rain could fall between the trough diving down in the tropical system so a little bit of an enhancement but the actual i-95 corridor from boston up to the down east areas in maine not as much rain you get into the interior sections of vermont new hampshire and maine few inches of rain as possible winds like i said they're stronger closer to the coast like the delmarva the tidewater up to new jersey long island southern new england you could get some strong gusty winds, 30 to 40 miles per hour. Some scattered power outages are absolutely possible and certainly possible in the central apps where a lot of rain, flooding threats, saturated soils, some gusty winds are likely there too. And then we get up to the northeast. Some stronger winds are possible getting pushed up against some of these higher mountain ranges, mountain tops. Like I'm sure the winds will be uh, very, very strong on top of Mount Washington, which is... Uh, in New Hampshire, I believe. Sometimes I get a mix up between New Hampshire and Vermont. I should know that. But, uh, you know, that's known. They're notorious for some of the worst weather on the, on the in the world. So I'm sure the winds will be very strong up there. 
as this low uh, passes uh, very closely. But some gusty winds up here in the northeast. Now, folks, we have already another area to watch. Okay, and we did we, we did have one before this, but it did not make it. Dry air got the best of it. But listen, everything is coming together at this point for the lid to come off the Atlantic. I, I was talking to you a couple weeks ago, you know, when it was quieter, that, you know, there was a favorable MJO phase moving in the beginning of August. It'll get really settled the second, third week of August, and that's exactly what's happening. You know, Debbie was kind of a, honestly, Debbie was sort of an event that um, it really didn't support that much kind of the, the environment background out there in the Atlantic. It kind of emerged, it survived that desert dust, and then it actually kind of moved into rising air that was moving towards it. And it was also, uh, you know, it was in a favorable kind of area of rising air called a Kelvin wave. We're not going to get into that. But anyways, this has legs, and I expect, as of right now, this has a 20% chance to develop in the next seven days. I fully expect this to get bumped to, to a 30% sometime today, maybe even a 40% chance. If it goes from 30 to 40, you'll see this area in yellow switch to orange. You see a little icon down here. And then if it goes above 60 to a 70, it goes from orange to red. I fully expect the confidence to increase by the time we make, start, make our next video. So what is this wave? Well, you can barely see it. It's a low rider. It's way down here. Now, there's just a whole lot of unsettled weather down here. We got some energy kind of behind this wave too. Um, we'll kind of move the screen. We got some energy behind this way, but it's basically just an area of multiple vortices out here. It's uh, nothing is consolidated, but eventually models are latching on to the idea of a dominant vortice forming. The environment conditions are going to are going to be favorable for this, and then once it does, it's game on. But that is the area we are watching. If we look at some model guidance, guys. Okay, we're going to start this off tomorrow evening. Not a whole lot goes on into the weekend. The GFS as we're getting in the Sunday morning. Okay, has this low something right around here. Finally latches on to it. We get into Tuesday morning. All of a sudden, we have a developing tropical wave, tropical depression, getting close to the Lesser Antilles. Okay, we go on and flip this to the Western Atlantic. Here it comes up on your screen. Watch how fast this strengthens. Makes uh, technical landfall as a hurricane in the uh, northern sections of the Lesser Antilles. 978 millibar hurricane, very small, compact hurricane, and uh, continues to maintain strength, gets stronger, turns into a major hurricane north of Puerto Rico. It looks like it's beginning to turn, but you never know what the steering currents are going to do this far out. Okay, and then we take it to about 10 days out, and we're just going to stop it there. Has a major category three ish hurricane chilling out in the southwest Atlantic, and we're all watching it like a hawk. Is it going to continue to go out to sea? What is it going to do? We don't know what the steering currents are going to do this far out. We don't have a clue. We can all assume that, hey, this this threat's going to go out to sea. But, you know, the, we, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do that at all. Um, now you look at the European model, same thing. Takes a while for energy to consolidate. Okay. We get into Sunday afternoon, just a wave. And we take it all the way to um, around Monday morning, August the 12th. Still not a lot going on, right? So you kind of bump it back to the same thing I just did with the GFS. Here comes that wave emerging. Gets it's a it's definitely further south. It gets this tropical wave into the Western Caribbean. I'm sorry, the um the Eastern Caribbean. Okay. We continue to move this forward. Has a hard time getting going. Moves over Hispaniola as kind of a tropical storm midway next week. We get into next Thursday morning, a week from today. Now we have a developing tropical storm starting to get closer to the Bahamas. 997. Okay, we're getting to a 994 millibar low. And you notice it's kind of in the same area as the GFS, but it's certainly a lot closer land. It's actually in, impacting areas of the islands. Okay, and then we continue to move. This turns into a full-fledged hurricane uh, off uh, just, I would say, east and northeast of the Bahamas. And then we have a major hurricane off the coast of the southeast. It's uh, just on the Euro, it's a lot closer to the southeast. The GFS, it's way out here. So both models are really liking the idea of this happening. Even the icon, if you look at the final frame of the icon, it takes us all the way out to like next Monday night. You have a developing tropical wave right here. Classic look for something on the way. And if you back this up and look at the OOZ also, same thing. And if we continue to move this another few days out, it takes us 
all the way to about a week out, literally a week out from right now, next Thursday morning. We have a tropical storm in the southwest Atlantic. Now, what's the steering current going to be? There's absolutely no point in talking about that right now. we got to figure out this is going to develop, but we will start to break that down. And we can fully move past Debbie, and we can put a lot of attention on this. But, you know, it's not slowing down anytime soon. If you look at the European Ensemble, uh, this, remember, this makes up 51 members. Same thing we were looking at with Debbie and Barrel. That is a very loud signal. Uh, this actually goes out just one week, just one week. That's all I'm going to take it because if I continued it, uh, you would see a bunch of crazy members impacting land. No point in showing you guys that. But this takes us one week. And we got some members into the Caribbean, a lot of members right here between Cuba and uh, what is it, the Turks and that area. And uh, the, that's just a lot of members, guys. I mean, that's well over half the members showing something developing. And we do have some strong members in there, too. So it's a very loud signal. I'm not going to lie, you know, and we'll talk more about the details on the environment background, all that, like I said, um, over the next few videos, when we can finally scoot on past Debbie, we can put all of our attention on this, and we certainly will, like we did Barrel, like we did Debbie, like we've done all the tropical systems in the past. So if we look at what's going on right now, guys, of course, we got Debbie the eyesore down here bringing numerous flash flood warnings. We got this huge area of showers and storms cruising across areas of Kansas, uh, it's really impacting like southeastern Kansas this morning. A lot of rain. We got some rain up here in western Nebraska. We got some showers uh, kind of meandering up here in the UP of Michigan and um, uh, northern Wisconsin. A lot more rain up here in Ontario. A little spin on going up here in Canada. And just some showers kind of working their way through across the Rockies. Nothing too crazy. Uh, now, as far as watches, warnings, and advisories. Uh, you know, areas of the southeast is really in the mid-Atlantic have really skipped out on the heat because we've had the cloud cover and the rain from Debbie. But, you know, the orange area, you got heat advisories, the purple excessive heat warnings, um, a lot going on with that. Uh, just with the nasty heat that continues to be a big factor in this area. So flood watch is extending all the way up into the interior section of the mid-Atlantic and uh, New England. We even got heat advisories up here in areas of... Um, Washington state. The entire state of Florida has either a heat advisory or excessive heat warning. So very hot, soupy conditions where you continue just to get kind of the moist feed from Debbie. That's really uh, making your, I would say your, uh, your humidity just about unbearable out there. But as far as the flash flooding risk, of course, we got the high risk across Virginia, North Carolina. We got a flooding risk that extends all the way up to PA, all the way back down to South Carolina. And we do have a flooding risk uh, and that yellow, that's a 15% risk of flash flood guidance being exceeded within 25 miles in a given location in areas in northern New Mexico and around just about up the front range of Colorado. So uh, the severe weather risk outside of Virginia and North Carolina, there's no big time risk of severe weather today. And we've already broke down this for you guys. Um, so if you're wondering for information on this, definitely kind of go back to the impacts uh, timestamp for Debbie. And I got you covered with that. But we're actually going to skip the, north, the southeast and the northeast, guys, just because we kind of covered you guys already in the tropics update. We'll go right to the south-central U.S., and that area of energy will continue to cruise on to Missouri, probably dissipate. We'll just kind of get some on-and-off sprinkles and showers throughout Kansas up in Nebraska, maybe getting to Missouri throughout the afternoon. Uh, very hot weather, though, in the south-central U.S. We're going to get some showers and storms and across areas of Colorado, especially northern New Mexico. Some storms could make their way this evening into the panhandle of Texas. Some of these storms could be severe, especially overnight tonight, as you see this complex of storms riding into the panhandle of Oklahoma, uh, just uh, north of the border into Kansas, just south of the border into Oklahoma. And then we're waking up tomorrow morning, and we're going to do it again, just in kind of an unorganized area of rain surging across the central plains. Uh, the north central U.S., scattered showers will kind of be the theme we get into this afternoon. Showers, maybe even a storm as possible in the eastern UP of Michigan. Some showers possible up here in northern Minnesota. Shower activity will continue to be a thing in central and western Nebraska. Also in southwestern uh, South Dakota. And just uh, just a little bit of a return flow from the north with this trough in place. All in all, I mean, you guys are kind of like right in the middle of the gearing of the pattern here. And there's just not a whole lot going on. Out west... We'll kind of get the spike of shower and storm activity pretty much in the Four Corners region. You know, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico. We'll see some scattered showers and storms. And pretty much we're 
all the four corner states meet. That'll probably be where the epicenter of the most activity will be. But we'll get these complexes of storms that certainly could be more intense than others, especially like kind of south of Denver, maybe down to Boulder, uh, Colorado Springs today. Uh, uh, Pueblo certainly could get some storms this afternoon to this evening. And uh, I think the northern Rockies will be pretty quiet today. Temperatures, a little area of warm air um, surging all the way up in the lower Michigan. So lower Michigan will climb back into the 80s. You got this extension of very hot, soupy air all the way up into southern sections of Ohio, West Virginia, and Kentucky. Where temperatures will climb into the upper 80s, low 90s. Cloud cover and all that stuff will keep things cooler in the Carolinas all the way up into the northeast. Uh, and then, of course, Oklahoma and Texas are going to be baking alive today well into the 100s. Um, and then, you know, you go up into the high plains. This is probably where your most comfortable conditions are. Like in areas of Wyoming, will not get out the 50s today. <clears throat> a very pleasant day in Montana, the Dakotas. Kind of a fall-like day, some showers out there. Just some people won't get anything. Some people will. But you get across the Rockies and the valley areas and then kind of on the west side of the Rockies. It's really, it, it's pretty warm. Feels like summer across the Western state. So that's all I got, guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for trusting me with covering Debbie. It's been a wild um, first seven days of August as far as growth. Um, so I don't think we're going to settle down anytime soon. So uh, definitely buckle up and uh, continue to tune in. God bless all y'all. And I'll have another video um, sometime tonight or maybe in the morning. God bless.